would not be the case in a web conference, of course. So we are very much interested in digital subjects, transformation of the health sector, for example. We have also a new um, state secretary for digitization who has been talking about flight taxis, for example. And there's a new hashtag for her, flight taxi. And we wanted, first of all, to talk about the future of traveling and the service provided and what you can expect of them. We did a representative survey within the German um, population, amongst the German population, and we got some very interesting results. I saw that I'm somebody who is not the typical traveler, although I use, of course, many digital devices. And I also saw that still travel agencies are a first contact for many people that travel. We would like to talk about digital traveling, and digital tra traveling starts even before the actual travel, with the idea, with the booking, and then the travel experience. And then afterwards, also, a feedback or maybe looking back at your travel, what we would do, what you have been doing in the past uh, with a photo evening or whatever, and now you would do a digital photo show. So I would now like to present you some of the results and the different stops or stations of what we call the customer journey in tourism. Let us start with inspiration many inspirations, you get them online, but this is an exception. Only one in four travelers has got online information for his or her new travel. Mostly people get inspiration in a traditional way because they talk to friends or because they have seen an ad somewhere. Then of course, also inspiration via Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Snapchat. These are also counted amongst those who have got their inspiration online. But it's only 4% who got their inspiration via a social network by seeing, for example, photos or uh, reports of friends online in social media. After inspiration, you would get information on your travel. And there you can see that uh, quite a few people already work online, so to speak. They do some research online before getting into contact with the travel agency. This is the case, for example, in the automotive sector. Ten years ago, when somebody bought a new car, he went to see the agent nine times. Today, it's only 1.3 times that so the decision to buy a certain car is already taken before. And then you get to get your car with the agent. And this is a comparable situation in uh, the travel business. 43% get information only online, even if in the end they do not book online. So it will be very important for travel agencies that want to be uh, successful in the future, it will be very important to have also an online representation and that they get into contact with their customers in the digital world. Um, travel agencies are important, stay important for planning, for the planning process and some online agencies are are dominating the sector. Um, I think my, I myself got into a travel agency the last time 10 years ago. But typically, a, a traveler would go to an agency, get some advice, and in the end also buy the travel in the um, agency. There is an interesting phenomenon. In usual, usually, we have differences according to the age of the users. The older the user is, the less he or she uses online media. This is not the, the case in traveling. If you look at people 20 or 30 years old, or uh, people between 50 and 64 years old, the online 
usage rate is comparable, is almost the same. And then when people get 65 years old, all of a sudden they don't use online media at all. What do people, why do people use online uh, booking features, for example? Because they say um, they are independent of opening hours and this is certainly something that a traditional travel agency could never provide. A um, travel agency, of course, will be closed maybe at uh, 8 in the evening or 6 in the evening and during the weekend. For this online world has an advantage. And of course, you have also the possibility to compare certain offers. And that is very much appreciated by people booking online as well. But this would be a possibility for a classic travel agency as well. Why should you have more, more, more possibilities to compare? It's just quite the contrary. So there's another point, cancellation. One people in five say that they book online because they cancellation would be easier. This is also a systemic advantage of online bookings that should not necessarily be an advantage. It should be possible also to uh, cancel your travel in an agency as you can do it online. Many people try also to find the best offer online, but it's not necessarily so. Only for 37 percent, this is an important argument for booking online, that they could find the best offer. 52 percent say that uh, it is an advantage to have a broader um, offer online, but I'm not really sure that this is true. It is often difficult to book online, to get information online, just because the offer is so large. And there the travel agency can maybe already filter some of the offers. And this is one of the advantages. 63% um, say that they uh, appreciate the advice they get in a travel agency and the personal contact. And this is exactly also the the opportunity to save time and to provide better quality. 35%, 25%, sorry, one out of four persons say that uh, they um, are worried concerning the use of their data, which is also the case for people doing online banking. People say, no, I don't do that because I'm not convinced that this is secure. And it's the same for booking uh, travels um, online. 25% say that they believe that their data is better protected in a travel agency than online. If we ask people what they expect of a travel agency, we see that they have uh, many expectations. A screen, a tablet maybe to get first a first impression during uh, their phase of deciding where they want to go. And one in two people expect of a travel agency that they could get a VR goggle to get more than just a first impression, but a 360 degree live experience, uh, just like a cam that you would wear doing skiing, where can, you can not only see what are the weather conditions, but where you can really experience the uh, site where you want to go, maybe also see whether there is a construction site close to the, to the hotel an information that maybe the uh, travel agency does not have. But if you have this live VR possibility to look at the, uh, at the scene, you would get this impression. I don't know whether people are also willing to pay a little bit more for such a service. In general, they say, no, we are not. But um, people have certain expectations towards the travel agency, and sometimes the travel agency can meet these expectations. Another surprise, here in Berlin we talk a lot about Airbnb, online platforms, uh, private offers for accommodation. Airbnb, if, you, if we ask travelers here in Germany, does not really play that an important role. Only 6% of people traveling have booked via Airbnb or window on my flat. This is 
a small percentage, especially if you look at the discussion we had around this question whether Airbnb is allowed to offer accommodation here in Berlin and under what conditions. So people use a traditional online website of uh, tour operators or offers for holiday homes and so on with their own portals or on their own websites. So I suppose that there will be some changes in the next years concerning the booking behavior, but at present we can say that Airbnb and others play uh, have a less important role than we thought when we read articles in the newspapers or in other media. Airports are getting more and more digitized. And we asked people what would be their digital experience at an airport. For example, we asked also about body scanners. Do people use it? Uh, yes, I did, but this is not for me part of the travel experience. But you can see how far this subject of digital technologies and digitization um, is seen, how broad this subject is discussed. People say that they lack a help for orientation at the airport. We all have certainly already been walking at an airport. We didn't know how much time we would need to get to our gate. So it's easy technology, it's easy digital solutions to help travelers to better find their way at the airport or maybe also get to know the traveler in a better way and to sell them more, for example, whether he or she needs something to eat during the travel or a new tie. Wi-Fi. Lufthansa has just, together with Nokia, developed a new technology uh, to assure availability, not for onboard entertainment, but have a stable online connection on board. I had made the experience that it was very slow, but maybe it's not a typical experience. Those who have used Wi-Fi on board said that they were satisfied with it, or even very satisfied, 83%. So you can see that being online, having a Wi-Fi access even during your flight plays an ever more important role. 62% say that they have not yet used it, but they would like to do it. And apparently people are also willing to pay for it if they get a well-operating connection. And one third of a traveler says, no, I do not want to have a Wi-Fi access on board. Many, many things are possible now thanks to digital technology on board a, an aircraft. We asked whether people would like to get information on sites they're overflying or um, on the country they're flying over. Of course, you would need a digital form of information. It could also be a screen showing you in the window or in the onboard screen, would not be the onboard screen usually, but usually the window you're sitting by to give information about the site you're flowing, flying over. And this would be something that travelers would like to have, or maybe also the opportunity to uh, switch on or off uh, the light with your own smartphone. And I'm very surprised that this does not yet exist on board any aircraft. Sie wollen, dass ich aufhöre. <lacht> so, dann machen wir hier mit der letzten Folie dann vielleicht auch. Ähm well, this is it. Could you, we wanted to know also how travelers uh, deal with the information that they get. They use um, online evaluation portals 
Sometimes it is even uh, decisive for the booking, but only one in five or four person write an online evaluation. I do it sometimes as well, not only if I, I want to make a critical remark, but also if I was satisfied with what I got. So it's not only an information you can get, but also shape these information yourself, and it gets even more reliable. Some people say that they do not use it because what I find there is not uh, is, is fake anyway. But there are indications whether these information are fake or not. So we need also what we would call digitally responsible travelers who use these evaluation portals in an intelligent way. What would be the future of traveling? Well, it's like as if we would look in a crystal bowl. Um, we asked some travel managers some time ago who said that they could imagine virtual travels a little bit like a tropical island where you could get the illusion of uh, being at a certain site at a beach, for example, and maybe you would ask yourself, do you really want that? Do you really need that? And our customers said, yes, why not? Um, in a form of mixed reality, this would be really interesting. Just imagine that you go to Rome, to the Colosseum, and not only you can see these, so to speak, dead stones, but you get an impression of what was happening there. And you get an experience of long foregone times, as if you had lived 2,000 years ago at the time of the Roman Empire. So I do believe that we can expect a link, a closing up between the virtual and the real world. And this is an opportunity for the travel sector. And many customers are very open to use these offers. And we will have to develop them and to address our customers. Thank you very much.